But number one, I think you guys are getting lost in, in the woods with regards to the property. If I'm not mistaken, you guys are trying to consolidate this industry. And if you're trying to consolidate this industry, then focusing primarily on the property that this business is only using a small portion of seems like you're basically chasing a random rabbit when you're hunting for larger game, right? In other words, you're, you're not chasing the animal that you went out hunting for. What you're hunting for are business acquisitions. Now the business acquisition we're talking about here, it has challenges. You guys know that generally I prefer that you go out and do a cleaner first acquisition than something like this. And so therefore, what I would recommend to you guys is really simple. Stick to your guns, make the offer, take it or leave it, and move along. Look, if you can take on the loan and take, you know, assume the loan, and if you, de if you decide that that's actually good business for you to assume the loan, then fine. But I think it's really important that you guys focus on what you want. What you want is the business that generates the cash flow. The property is the cherry on top. The other thing I really think you need, and this is very important for a situation like this, is A, a deadline for when you're either going to come to terms or you're going to walk away, and I would let it be no more than seven days from now. By this time next week, I think you guys should either have a deal worked out or move along. There you go. Right. The guy's getting married. Great. God bless him. Even more importantly though, I don't want you guys to get married to this deal and, and, and get wrapped around something that's not actually for real. This deal has its challenges. If I had it my way, you guys would keep looking for subsequent deals. But I see the potential that you guys have identified. If you can avoid putting a personal guarantee, if you do this thing through a seller finance note, then so be it. But I just wouldn't get wrapped around the axle on this thing. In the property, Make a very simple clean offer. We'll assume the loan. Otherwise, it's your property. You invested in this thing. You're the primary operator out of this building. We'll lease it from you after we do our business deal. If we do our business deal, now let's focus on the business deal. Either we assume the loan on the property or we don't. Not really our primary focus. Here's our offer for the business acquisition. What do you say? Take it or leave it. Okay. That's really what's needed here. You do those things and you're going to clean up. You're going to clean up the situation really quickly and either you buy the business on your terms or you move along and look for cleaner, better deal flow. And I'm sure it's out there, though at the same time I understand you guys are interested in this deal. Urgency is what's needed. Urgency is what drives action. And I think that's what's missing in this process. You guys have been going back and forth, back and forth. And don't get me wrong, you guys have been driving forward. That's good. But it needs to go from driving forward to a clear demarcation line in the sand that says, hey, after this date, we either have it worked out or we don't. That's it. Okay, so I wanted to follow up after that recorded call with those two clients that I'm working with and share three big takeaways that you ought to think about and they ought to think about as well. Okay, so number one, understand how badly a business acquisition can go if it goes wrong. Yes, everybody understands that when it goes right, a business acquisition can be powerful, it can be profound, it can just transform your financial future, especially if you go on and do a number of acquisitions successfully. That's what I talk about here on the YouTube channel, by the way, shameless plug to subscribe, or if you're following me on other social media platforms, subscribe there as well. Okay. But obviously, yes, it can go very well, but it can also go terribly badly, terribly badly. You can destroy your financial future. You can go bankrupt. You can destroy your ability to do more deals. You can obliterate your capacity to secure subsequent financings and do more deals. I mean, you can just, you can screw it up in every way if you do the wrong deal. And so young man's enthusiasm, as I call it, often clouds the judgment of these young men. Okay. I remember being 21. Now at 31, I realized that true courage isn't just doing something because you can, but rather true courage is understanding the risks and then making a smart plan to proceed in the face of understood risk. Young man's enthusiasm is not courage. True courage is, again, proceeding in the face of risk and being smart about how you mitigate the risk and increase the opportunity for upside. That's really what you want to be doing in this game of business buying. And so that's number one. Understand that bad deals can go terribly. Don't do a deal just because you can. Be smart. If you really want to create wealth, you have to do a lot of transactions, and one bad deal can screw it all up. That's the first big point. Point number two understand what seller finance really is and how it works. Okay. You cannot do a seller finance 
deal if the property you're trying to buy through seller finance has a big fat mortgage on it. And that's what my two clients were asking me about. And it's, it's understandable, but I just want to be really clear. If the lender has a big mortgage on a piece of property, then really the owner doesn't truly own the property. It's not free and clear as it's often called. Free and clear means there's no liens, there's no mortgages, there's no outstanding balances on the property. It's owned free and clear by the owner. Until it's free and clear, you can't do a seller finance deal because the true owner isn't the owner, it's the lender. It's the person who has the first lien on the property. So you can't do a seller finance deal if it's not free and clear. That's the second big point. And then the last point to emphasize here is, you've heard the old phrase, the man that chases two rabbits catches zero. Okay, the real game here that we're talking about, that I talk about, that I'm in the process of, being, you know, of doing with Bright Utilities, my investment group, is this game of consolidation, whereby you go out and you buy a plethora of companies over a number of years at between two to maybe four times earnings, and you consolidate these businesses and you standardize operations and you build a strong management team and you really optimize the processes and the software and the capacity of the business. And you, you integrate all these businesses that you've acquired. And over time, you really build this robust portfolio. And then after you build a really strong track record and, and a dominant position in the industry and in, in the marketplace, then at some point you sell the full portfolio for upwards of 8 or 10 or 12 or even 15 times earnings. And that's really how you create wealth in this game by buying businesses at between two to four times earnings. And over time, you sell the portfolio for upwards of eight to 15 times earnings. And the reason I was getting frustrated with my clients is because they're thinking about this property and they're thinking about all this other stuff. And I see this all the time. It's not just them, but you have to stay focused. You have to stay focused on what the actual end game goal you're after is. And when you stay focused, you cut out the white noise and stay Again, focused on what actually matters. What actually matters here is consolidating an industry, creating a really dominant position in the marketplace, building that dominant position, and then ultimately selling the portfolio down the road for a big, fat, frothy exit. So if what you're focusing on does not help you get to that end goal, then I don't recommend focusing on it for a minute. That's the punchline, all right? Now, with that being said, thanks for watching. If you've liked this, be sure to subscribe to the channel here or subscribe to my other social media platforms. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all that good stuff. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video if you've appreciated it, share your comments below. What do you want to talk about next? And for more information, go to jasonpaulrogers.com. If you want me to help you buy businesses or properties, and then likewise, if you're an accredited investor and all this sounds like too much work, but you'd like to get a high rate of return and let me do the hard work, then go to brightutilities.com. And with that, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.